Good happy Tuesday evening, March 15, 2022. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this Tuesday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Tuesday evening, so let's get started right now. First step, Nashua Church Pastor charged with possession of child sexual abuse images. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Whoa, whoa. Sorry, you probably didn't catch all that. Well, as you can see, Fidium... Yeah, Amy, this white building behind me is Bible Baptist Church here on Caldwell Road in Nashua. I'll step out of the way. The pastor that also lives here on property was arrested this morning, as you mentioned, possessing of child sexual abuse images. Uh, that pastor is 46-year-old Stephen Bates, who also lives here uh, on the property, as I mentioned. This investigation dates back to 2016, when the Nashua Police Department was notified by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, uh, informing them that child sex abuse images had been accessed by an IP address associated with this church. Several agencies were involved in the investigation, including the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Over the last three years, investigations in several states all pointed back to IP addresses associated with the Bible Baptist Church, police say. Those agencies collected enough evidence to execute a search warrant, and that's when the arrest was made. We made contact with Pastor Bates uh, during a search of his person. He had some uh, thumb drives or flash drives on him, which we were able to analyze on scene, and they contained child pornography. Now, Bates was being held on $3,000 cash bail. He was scheduled to be arraigned tomorrow. More charges are expected. Live in Nashville with Jason King, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire shuts down state-run COVID-19 testing sites. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Whoa, whoa. Sorry, you probably didn't catch all that. Well, as you can see, Fiddy... This state-run testing site in Nashua is one of seven that will be shutting its doors Tuesday afternoon. State health officials say recent gains against the virus have made them unnecessary. As the level of COVID-19 has decreased across the state and in our communities, um, similarly, the, the demand for testing has decreased. Plus, at-home tests are now widely available. People can pick up at-home tests, um, you know, in, in state liquor stores. They can order at-home tests from the federal government. They can go to, you know, local... Um, commercial pharmacies and other, you know, stores and pick up, you know, at-home tests. Still, health officials say that COVID-19 is going to continue to circulate in the state and that people should stay vigilant. It's important to continue to test, of course, uh, so that we can identify and isolate individuals who are positive and uh, provide additional therapies and treatments to them if they're at high risk. State health officials say they'll continue to monitor COVID-19 levels and stay flexible when it comes to testing and other resources. But they emphasize that things are heading in the right direction. The trend we're seeing now um, is the, the, the trend that we hoped and expected to see as we um, entered into the spring months, which is the, the levels have been decreasing since the Omicron surge. Uh, if you'd like a list of where testing is available, you can head to our website, WMUR.com, and click on the link for this story. Reporting live in Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Prices continue to rise aimed pandemic and war in Ukraine. Let's take a listen to that video. Whoa, whoa. Sorry, you probably didn't catch all that. Well, as you can see, Fidium... 
Goods and services are getting more and more expensive, up 7.9% from a year ago, costing the average household an extra $300 a month, according to an analysis from Moody's. This is very likely going to continue even increasing on the short term. Economists say supply chain issues brought on by COVID continue. Every step, though, impacted by the rise in oil prices and the uncertainty of war. Because everything is so volatile now and you can't really uh, tell where everything is heading because, it's, as you can see, any news at any time, any day, uh, changes the whole setting. Food up nearly 9%. The cost of eating out or takeout up nearly 7%. That's the biggest one-year jump in food in over 40 years. Even clothes cost over 6% more. Many consumers feeling overwhelmed. Like a tidal wave that we see coming at us, the inflation and the price increases and the gas prices, the grocery prices, or the unavailability of so many things. Most everything's going up these days, including the price of my coffee, which just rose a quarter from $3. But they have to pass the costs along. Experts say settling the conflict in Ukraine is key, but they doubt that prices will go back to what they were. Long term, I think uh, we will see uh, kind of playing out an equilibrium, but everything at higher price levels. He recommends keeping track of costs, scaling back expenses. And he says that when the value of money declines, the best investment we can make is in ourselves, in our education, in our skills, and in our flexibility. In Portsmouth, Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News Now. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire businesses told to stop collection donation for Ukraine relief. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Whoa, whoa. Sorry, you probably didn't catch all that. Well, as you can see, fitting... Well, Amy, the Attorney General's office says those businesses were not registered with the state to accept donations. Now, state law requires that all persons or entities holding funds for charitable purposes or soliciting donations for charitable purposes must register with and report to the Charitable Trust Unit. The AG's office says even though those businesses had intentions to help the people of Ukraine, because they are not registered, they can't collect money or items. Berkshire Hathaway Verani Realty in Exeter received a letter from the Attorney General. The real estate office was collecting items to ship overseas to help refugees. I was really proud to be doing something and helping and um, I just feel like it's a big block right now. Certainly people can start their own charity to help people in Ukraine, but that will take some time and uh, uh, the folks in Ukraine need help now, so we think it's best to work with an existing charity if they can. Now, the Attorney General's office says while it does encourage donations, the laws are in place to protect granite staters from falling victim to scams. Reporting live, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Seven more COVID-19 deaths announced in New Hampshire as cases fall. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Whoa, whoa. Sorry, you probably didn't catch all that. Well, as you can see, Fidium... Right now, active cases of COVID in New Hampshire are below 800 for the first time since early August. There are 80 new cases to report tonight, and there are seven new COVID-related deaths, including two that were just confirmed from more than two weeks ago. Current hospitalizations are up to 42 tonight. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Suspect in homeless shootings in New York City in Washington, D.C. arrested. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC 7 NY. 
begin with the takedown of that suspect wanted for preying on unsuspecting homeless people sworn by agents and arrested in our nation's capital early this morning. He's suspected of shooting at least five people, three in D.C., two in New York City. Two of the victims were killed. Investigators today revealing what tied all the shootings together and how they tracked 30-year-old Gerard Brevard down. Eyewitness News reporter Savan Kim spoke to the suspect's father today. He's live outside NYPD headquarters in Lower Manhattan. Safan? Well, Shadi and Joe, the suspect's father, says he last spoke to his son on Sunday. He didn't think he would do anything violent. His father has a message for victims' families. He was kind of erratic in his, in his speaking. Gerald Brevard Jr. says he is broken, too, over his son's allegations. Sources say 30-year-old Gerald Brevard III was arrested by Metropolitan Police in connection with the shooting of three homeless men in Washington and two here in New York. One victim in D.C. and one in New York were killed. This is surveillance video of ATF agents swarming in on the suspect at a gas station in Washington, D.C. around 2.30 this morning. He's been dealing with mental issues. I, I tried to have him committed uh, on several occasions. At one point, he was in uh, St. Elizabeth's mental uh, hospital, and they let him out. I tried to get him committed, but they told me I couldn't because he's an adult. NYPD officials say it was his all-black clothing, his victims all being homeless men, and the 22 caliber gun used in the shootings that tied these all together. Then it was cooperation from police in D.C. and a flurry of tips from the public. He is considered a strong person of interest by the NYPD. He was not armed at the time of his arrest. Surveillance video from early Saturday morning in Soho captured the moment he kicks a homeless man and checks to see if there are any witnesses before he fires five shots. Days early in Washington, police say a homeless man was stabbed, shot, and set on fire. He has no connections to New York, uh, as far as we can see. He's mostly a, a D.C. guy and, and other states down, down, down south. We don't have any connection to him as New York. When we held a joint conference in D.C. last night, we asked for the public's help, and the response was extraordinary. The suspect's father in a statement adding, to the families of the victims, I extend my deepest condolences and am truly sorry for their losses and the circumstances. He is a good person, and like many across the world, he suffers from mental illness. The bigger picture is not that he has mental illness, but the number of times that he's been... Now the system has failed regarding the treatment of so many, including my son. Yeah, I just, I don't know, put my hands around him and hug him and just ask why. Now, meanwhile, law enforcement across the country is looking is now looking at shootings that match this pattern. It was a detective in D.C. who was a former Queens resident who happens to follow the NYPD on social media who made this connection. The suspect is not making any statements. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Good night and goodbye, everyone.